Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, March 13th, 2013. We begin with an update from the world of medicine. If someone's liver is failing, they're basically screwed unless they can get a transplant. And while we wait for regenerative medicine researchers to work out all the challenges of printing human organs, we may need to turn to some other species, which is what a scientist from the U.S. Department of Agriculture has been doing when studying a particular cell line, a very special immortal cell line developed from embryonic stem cells that came from a pig embryo. Called PICM19, the cell line was created in 1991 and can divide essentially forever. It's been used to study how stem cells differentiate into many various cell types, and several cells found in the liver were successfully derived. One of them being hepatocytes, responsible for many of the metabolic functions associated with the liver. Secreting bile, storing glucagon to control blood sugar, processing cholesterol and other lipids, and most importantly, scrubbing the bloodstream of toxins. Artificial livers could be made containing these pig-derived liver cells, probably a porous structure that allowed certain metabolites and toxins in and out, but not direct contact with the human bloodstream and immune system. Experiments with these cells inside a test tube have already been promising. One challenge to overcome will be growing this cell line without feeder cells, generally mouse cells that help support the pig cells. Even before that's done, these immortal cells can be used to study various diseases that involve the liver. They've already been used to study malaria, toxoplasmosis, and hepatitis. Another really cool idea is subjecting the liver cells to evolution-style selective pressures. Because the cells come from an essentially infinite source, researchers could just keep doing this until the liver cells became even more efficient or specialized in processing toxins allowing artificial livers to potentially be even better than the original tissue for certain tasks. Next is a story from the world of biology. One of the big questions in biology is whether or not viruses are alive. Certainly, they are much simpler than any bacteria or other microbe, but they do multiply and evolve like all life does. A team over at Tufts University made a somewhat surprising discovery in the genome of a bacteriophage. That's a virus that targets a bacteria. Within this particular strain was a complete set of genes hijacked from a bacteria's adaptive immune system. This is actually good news for us, because the virus in question selectively infects the bacteria that causes cholera. They even tested it on some cholera that had become naturally resistant to certain viruses. Normal bacteriophage strains weren't successful, but the viruses with the built-in immune systems were able to counteract the cholera's natural defenses which means this very selective virus could be used as a treatment to cure people of cholera, especially in the face of growing antibiotic resistance. In addition to increasing the development of phage-based therapies, this particular virus demonstrates some novel functions. Although still parasitic, this adaptive immune system and its associated genes are one of the most complex systems a virus has used. Next, the team will study how exactly the virus uses these new abilities to help it infect the cholera-causing microbe leading to the development of highly effective virus-based therapies against this disease and possibly others. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. With that last story, do you think viruses should be universally considered a living thing? They don't metabolize, but do replicate with the help of a host. Discuss your thoughts in the comments.